And uh, let's get the latest on the SADC Troika meeting with uh, Chris Otamringa, who joins us live now from uh, Kinshasa. Chris, thank you so much for your time this evening. Can you briefly give us a summary of what Minister Naledi Pando touched on during the opening remarks? Well, so uh, Minister Naludi Pandi said uh, that uh, they are committed to carry out some of the protocols of uh, the Troika, which is the body, the organ of the SADC that is in charge of peace and security in the area. They want to ensure that the 16 member states of the SADC are uh, peaceful and that uh, there's no threats in, in the area. Now, we had a meeting, of, I mean, uh, an interview with one of the executive directors of the SADC who said that they are watching uh, uh, what is happening in the DRC very closely, particularly the resurgence of the M23 rebels in the east of the DRC. That is something that is of great concern to them and that they are following it and they want to ensure that at the end of it all that, there's, that the DRC is secure. SADC has been a very important partner of the DRC in the past. In 1998, it authorized troops from Namibia, Angola and Zimbabwe to intervene in the east of the DRC to stop uh, troops from Rwanda and Uganda that had invaded the DRC. And then later on in 2013, SADC also, uh, member states like Tanzania, Malawi and South Africa sent troops, uh, I mean, in, who were under the United Nations peacekeeping mission, MONUSCO, to fight against the same rebels, the m 2 and they flushed them out together with the Congolese army. So uh, the, the, the regional uh, bloc has said that they are w willing to support, but they did not specify how exactly they're going to do that. This was a closed session, and so journalists were asked to go out, but they said they're watching whatever is happening in the east of the DRC and that they will be willing to help this country to secure its, its borders from some of the neighboring countries. I know, Chris, you say that uh, you were asked uh, to leave that particular meeting especially on this particular issue of the DRC. I mean, it's a lot of concern. How difficult, though, would the talks have been inside as they talk about this situation and what the resolutions need to be? Well, the resolutions, we're not, we're not clear about what they have decided upon, but they said that this, uh, whatever they discuss, the ministers, uh, the security experts in that meeting are going to come up with a report, which they will then hand over to the presidents and the heads of government who are going to start meeting tomorrow. And uh, at the close of the session on Thursday, there will be a communique about the decisions that they have uh, have reached mm. the drc government has been you know moving around the continent um, around the continent seeking support from different uh, players to help them deal with uh, the security situation there in the east of the drc there is a key town and several villages villages that have been occupied by the m23 rebels the drc people have been urging the president to wage a war against the, the, that that mm. uh, rebel group and uh, by extension Rwanda as well, which they accuse of supporting the M23 rebels. Rwanda has uh, several uh, severally denied these accusations and said the DRC government is also supporting a Hutu militia that is operating in the east of the DRC. So the situation is very tense, but member states from the Southern African Development Community are going to discuss all these issues and they will come up with a communique. But the general feeling among people in the DRC is that um, there is a, a kind of a international, the international community is calling on dialogue. They do not want war because the DRC has suffered decades of conflict. Millions of people have been displaced in this country and so they are urging them to have dialogue with the different rebel groups. Mm. And Chris, as we then uh, wrap up, let's look at the summit. I mean, also discussing development and climate change. What are the countries saying ahead of the heads of states and the government meeting? Well, most of these countries that have gathered here in Kinshasa are really looking at uh, development. 
trade and development is one of the key issues that they want to see happen in the area, especially after the negative impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. And so uh, one of the themes that they're going to be discussing is about industrialization. They want to promote industrialization through agro-processing, uh, value addition in the mineral sector, so that the people in these 16 nations that are members of the Southern African Development Community can live uh, better lives. That is the key issue that they want to discuss, to promote trade and improve the economies of all these member states. They're also going to be discussing issues of tourism, and they earlier discussed uh, gender equality, the inclusion of women in, in political political affairs across across the, the, the 16 nation countries. Those are the key issues that they're going to be talking about. All right, Chris, thank you so much uh, for that update. Do appreciate it. That is uh, uh, Chris Ochamringa joining us uh, from Kinshasa, giving us uh, the very latest when it comes uh, to that Sadek Troika meeting.